Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our special transmission on the 5th of February, uh, the so Solidarity Day for Kashmiris. Uh, Pakistan, of course, stands with our Kashmiri brethren um, as we have consistently. Um, of course, we uh, commemorate this day as a Solidarity Day um, uh, to tell the world, of course, uh, about the hu gross uh, human rights violations we've seen. The uh, uh, Kashmiris suffer consistently. Um, you know, of course, the struggle for their self-determination that has continued relentlessly. Um, we'll be talking about that. We'll also be talking about, of course, in the last uh, in the last few days, we've seen the Indian occupation forces further in intensify uh, these gross human rights violations, barbaric uh, uh, treatment of uh, the Kashmiris, coercing innocent Kashmiris to host Indian flags. Um, on Republic Day is just one of those examples. We've also seen India's high-handedness to, uh, you know, project a sense of normalcy to try to fool the world um, about what's actually happening in Kashmir at this time. Um, you know, of course, uh, the way that they have, uh, you know, butchered uh, Kashmiris is no secret. And uh, Pakistan's struggle uh, along with the Kashmiris too uh, tell this to the world, to show this to the world, for, for to get the world to react um, is, uh, of course, uh, manifest. Uh, it's also something that is commemorated on this day. All of that today, um, we'll be talking about all of that. I have with me Dr. Uwais bin Basi, who is a Kashmiri leader. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Um, I have also with me Dr. Jamil Khan, who is a former ambassador. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Hussein Shaheed Sorwadi, who's an expert on foreign affairs. Uh, thank you for being with us. We also have with us Mary Scully, who's a political and social activist who's worked uh, extensively uh, for uh, the cause of the Kashmiris. Um, you know sh who she's added her voice to uh, the cause of the Kashmiris uh, along with uh, other people. Thank you so much for being with us today. And gee, Dr. West, like I was saying, of course, uh, you know, we are no strangers to the kind of treatment that we've seen consistently meted out to the Kashmiris uh, at the hands of, uh, you know, the Indians and the soldiers, uh, their soldiers there, the forces that are uh, at this time there. We've also seen, you know, the change in laws. We've also seen, the, uh, you know, the move to change the demographic of uh, Kashmir, all of those things. How do you see the overall impact of all of those things? at the world at large? Do you think that the world is, uh, you know, starting to perhaps see what's happening in Kashmir? Uh, uh, it's uh, very unfortunate. What I see is world is perhaps uh, not uh, uh, understanding, not mm. realizing mm. the gravity of uh, this situation in Jammu and Kashmir, right. not uh, uh, in the recent past, but for the past uh, you know, 74 years, mm. because that uh, issue remains on the agenda of the United Nations. Mm. A lot of uh, issues uh, have been resolved mm. since uh, 1947, mm. but only two issues, issue of Jammu and Kashmir and issue of Palestine, mm. they are the notable issues which are yet to be resolved. Mm. As far as uh, this uh, uh, global body's uh, mm, uh, role is concerned, uh, that is uh, not uh, at the desirable level, mm. as uh, this is an internationally recognized dispute right. at the agenda of the United Nations. Mm. In the recent past, United Nations Security Council has taken up and discussed mm. it, mm. but still uh, uh, we, 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 do, we do not see um, something tangible uh, on the part of uh, the United Nations uh, though there are some uh, some 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 reports that uh, we do witness, mm. uh, we do see that some reports are issued, some statements by the Secretary General, mm. but uh, the uh, desirable action that You're is saying that, that the impact is overall, it's not as much as we would like. The kind of reaction we would like to see the UN take, the kind of action uh, it, we, we it have. Was, it was the you know it was the mm. mandate of the United Nations. Mm to resolve such a conflict. This is one right. of the prime objectives hmm. for which this global body has been constituted. Hmm. But, uh, and there are more than, uh, you know, 17, 18 resolutions adopted hmm. by the United Nations. So that is, it, it uh, you know, uh, breaches the mandate. It breaches its own principles. It breaches its own charter. And this is not, an, you know, just a simple conflict. 
this is a conflict which is a which has a nuclear dimension mm. and that nuclear dimension uh, has been you know world already knows that right. but bill clinton also pointed out that this is the uh, 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 fl flash flash point mm. so uh, it could it could lead to any disaster uh, mm. not only in this region of south asia but mm. it could spread to have uh, spread uh, to the whole world. Right. So that is uh, keeping this context in view. Hmm. I think the uh, United Nations uh, must have played a very significant role to maintain peace, to resolve this dispute hmm. between the two countries in order to um, aggravate, uh, uh, avoid any aggrava uh, aggravation of this situation. Right. Let me come back to you. Gee, Dr. Jamil, um, you know, overall, we've been, I hope you've been following, we've been talking about how uh, the role of United Nations as far as this, this conflict in the region is concerned is clearly wanting. Uh, you know, do you agree with that? Of course, you know, we've seen other and according to um, Dr. West, you know, he's talking about the fact that, of course, as far as other disputes are concerned, they have been resolved, but we haven't seen any headway as far as the issue of Kashmir is concerned and Palestine being the other standing issue for the United States. Um, of course, uh, do you think that the recent events perhaps have had more impact um, on the United Nations as a whole and the world also, the way that of course Pakistan has tried uh, for you know to to play it up as for for the world to get them to notice it to get them to react to it Well, I think it's high time uh, that that mm -hmm. the uh, People at large around the world those who understand about the human mm -hmm. rights violation and its consequences particularly mm -hmm. under the circumstances which has just been illustrated by mr. West um, mm -hmm. Uh, that the two countries, uh, both countries nuclear, and I'll dilate later mm. on it later on. But let me first mm. uh, stay on this very point that this is an international law. Security mm. Council Resolution 47 is very clear, very mm. candid that the, uh, that the plebiscite should take place according to the wishes of the people, uh, Kashmiri people. And it doesn't really end there. Uh, the, all the atrocities and all the genocide which has been taking mm. place in this territory. Mm. Now, where in the world there is a contingent of force more than 900,000 mm. in a smaller territory and in a, such a mm. small segment mm. of population? Mm. I think this by itself. Now, mm. what other violations are being done? First, I'll give you the historical perspective and, mm. the, and the legal, the, the diplomatic legal are uh, legal diplomacy, you uh, know, it is the name of consistency and continuity. So if it has not been resolved, it has to be resolved under the Charter of the United Nations and all the other international laws. And here are some of it, which I'll just enumerate point-wise. Uh, India is involved in changing the demography. India is involved in bringing a new domicile uh, law in uh, the, the main territory. India is in, uh, providing legal cover to the rehab, uh, to the to, uh, to bring, um, the people against their own uh, legal mechanism of any, any territory which is under conflict and dispute territory under the Article 20 C, Commission. It's a crime against the peace and security of mankind and that leads to such a transfer and uh, is considered as the war crime. The statutes of international criminal court Article I think there's a there's a slight disruption in audio. I'll come back to you. I'm going to go to Mary Scully. Gee, Mary, we've been talking in your experience as far as uh, the situation of the Kashmiris is concerned. What do you think? Um, you know, of course, you've been pleading the cause of the Kashmiris uh, also. Why do you think that there is this kind of, uh, you know, uh, the kind of reaction one would like to see the world take, the UN take? Um, it has not been happening. I mean, there are countries who are also sympathetic with the Kashmiri cause. We've also, Pakistan has consistently tried, you know, our prime minister has consistently tried 
to um, you know talk about Kashmir every time there is you know uh, any forum that is one of the biggest you know one of the foremost agendas as far as uh, the issue of Kashmir is concerned but unfortunately we don't see the kind of reaction one would like and the barbarity uh, the kind of uh, you know gross human rights violations that is no secret what's happening in Kashmir at this time so why do you think there is that kind of uh, you know non reaction or you know, no action from the United Nations? Uh, well, I'm, uh, my orientation isn't so much to, to the um, legalities and, and to the United Nations as to um, building um, a, a broad-based international solidarity movement. Um, and in that regard, um, it, it's a rather, there, there are many elements. One of them is that there was a, um, decades sustained long news blackout about Kashmir. Um, and most people didn't even know that the conflict existed. Um, when, when the, with the introduction of social media, Kashmiri activists who had some measure of freedom at that time, um, uh, human rights activists, journalists, citizen journalists by the thousands, um, came onto social media and began campaigning and educating around that issue. And um, that's what, how I got involved and how um, many other people got involved. They um, campaigned around that, around what was going on with them. And I think that explains um, partly why the uh, crackdown by India on human rights activists and journalists is so draconian. They want to silence those voices. They, they drove thousands of Kashmiri um, activists and Pakistani supporters and other people, they drove them off of social media. India demanded that Twitter and, um, and Facebook uh, get rid of them and they, they complied. Uh, even myself, uh, who, who writes about Kashmir and other um, solidarity activists are not, uh, we cannot be seen in India or uh, occupied Kashmir. But there, there's an element that I think we need to talk about and that is in India itself, the liberals and the left support the occupation of Kashmir. Um, God knows why they don't, because they're often supporters of Palestinians, God knows why they don't understand the affinities and see the, the anti-colonial struggle involved. But there has not developed in India any kind of anti-colonial movement. Okay, With I want to talk more about this. Uh, Mary, I'll just come back to you. I will just come back to you. Uh, we have with us Mashal Malik, uh, you know, who is no, we don't need to, I mean, she doesn't need an introduction as far as her own voice for the Kashmiri cause is concerned. Mashal, overall, you know, what Mary was talking about was that there is uh, this uh, dearth of uh, reaction one would like to see from uh, the, the liberals within India. Uh, would you agree with that? Because, you know, we also saw some uh, voices, there were some sane voices we saw, uh, you know, raising uh, their voice, a voice as far as for the cause of Kashmiris. Uh, would you agree with that? It's, it's a tragedy that right now what India is going through is a complete civil war, the way the minorities are being targeted, the doves, the peacemakers, or the liberals, they're all scattered of those who believed in the secular policy of Mahatma Gandhi. Their own Indian constitution is torn apart because you have the BJP, the RSS, the hawkish uh, Akhand Bharat narrative telling around of Hindutva, where even the Hindus are insecure because if they do not follow the lines of Hindutva, they will be marginalized, they will be penalized. And the same is going on with the Christians, with the Dalits over there. And in such a situation, um, I mean, you know, I wish the civil society was more active, more proactive over there, the liberals, the the secular approach, or even those who are the peacemakers or uh, part of, you know, who believe that Kashmiri should be given their uh, right to self-determination. If they had spoken up before in the past, been more and more united, we would not have seen this day of, you know, Hindutva emerging at such a fast pace. If you go back 20 years, there's hardly any, you know, strong uh, wave of uh, BJP. So we have the RSS, not of uh, Vajpayee BJP, but of Modi. 
So you can expect anything over there. But then coming to the issue of Kashmir, uh, it, 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 it's so dangerous what's going on over there. And uh, we've, see, we've seen over the past 50 years of dialogue and bilateralism with India but and Michelle, Pakistan. But overall, um, as far as dialogue is concerned, as far as, you know, the you know our own, Pakistan's own also movement is concerned for the Kashmiris, Kashmiri cause, do you think that we are making, uh, you know, because we've been having this discussion on and off as far as Kashmir is concerned, do you think that overall, because we saw New York Times now and again write about it, we saw overall, you know, different publications all over the world talk about, uh, you know, what's happening in Kashmir. Do you think that the world is maybe not at a very fast pace, but one can perhaps say that, you know, there is at a snail's pace, things are, the world may be waking up to the Kashmiri cause, or do you think that's too optimistic? No, I, I agree with you because there's a lot of evidence to that, because we've seen after 5th of August 2019 that Indians have changed their legal moves through the changing time slowly and steadily. But 5th of August is like, you know, complete de-enfranchising, decolonialization, of completely, you know, um, making it into an Indian majority area. First was their occupation. Now it is their public. Over 50 lakh Indians have been issued domicile certificates. The West, the, the world at large, there were no obvious takers of this draconian move committed by India through a lawfare. Mm -hmm. And we, we saw a lot of reports, condemnations, even during COVID time, when the global focus was on combating that invisible uh, enemy uh, throughout the world, uh, and the people were dying, lost to loss of economies. We did see two last year strong uh, British uh, Parliament uh, hearings or uh, British Parliament, you know, uh, there were debates on Kashmir. We saw two Congress hearings in America. We witnessed Kashmir Solidarity Day in New York last year, this of uh, February, uh, and then um, the Amnesty International report and the way the international observers were attacked or kicked out, even the UN Moge vehicle was attacked at the LOC, which which definitely, you know, left an international impact. And also the disinfo lab scam, that 15 years of false propaganda and fake news was exposed of India in various INGOs, over 300 of, you know, uh, bad mouth. So you're saying that that movement. propaganda, there is definitely a dent in that, that propaganda that India has been meting out um, as far as the world is concerned overall? Development is very welcoming what Talk White, a law firm, has done for the first time ever. Uh, it's not just of issuing a report on the war crimes. They have taken the legal course and filed an official complaint in the British police station uh, against the sitting army chief and the home minister of India. Uh, and they have over 2,000 testimonies of Kashmiri victims with them. And if India obviously will be rejecting it and they're they, their representative in the UN uh, complained also that this is not acceptable because for them, they think no law is applicable on India, though this has come under universal jurisdiction. So now we see that that course is opening, but you're right uh, that, you know, the impact is going slowly and international law uh, we cannot, uh, you know, yield results overnight. It takes time. It has to be a broad brush approach. It has to be political, diplomatic and legal. Legal is the main and not a reactive but a proactive policy on the legal front, be it, you know, the way uh, UN constituted ad hoc tribunals of international criminal courts in Rwanda mm -hmm. and in Yugoslavia on the war crimes, ethnic cleansing and genocide being committed and punish the killers. Uh, in the same manner we demand, we have two strong UN reports uh, mm -hmm. backing uh, the crimes that India has committed and getting immunity, and also the latest dossier by Pakistan being presented to the UN. This can be forwarded to the ICC, the International Criminal Court, to the chief prosecutor. A strong case can be sent there, and also at the same time to International Court of Justice, because India has surpassed, superseded international law, humanitarian law, Geneva Convention, UN Security Council resolution. So this is the only way forward we have to save the Kashmiris from ethnic cleansing and also uh, the way they have uh, um, denied uh, Geneva Convention for it, they have violated it. So they need to be held under legal obligations internationally. If they're not, then they will continue non-stop. Thank you so much for being with us, Mashal. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. G, Dr. Wes, uh, you were listening to what Mashal was saying. She's saying that really the only way forward is the legal
uh, way to move forward and you know reactive approach is not really going to help us of course consistency is also important overall as far as this government is concerned of course you know we've seen a kind of uh, a consistency which uh, you would would you agree has had perhaps been missing before because you know we've seen them consistently the prime minister talk about kashmir it's always been number one on the agenda every time he's spoken at the un also his address there um, overall you know all all uh, at all the international forums it remains uh, on at the very top of his agenda right you know what uh, uh, miss uh, michal malik has uh, pointed out about Gee. the uh, legal dimension mm. of this dispute mm. this is extremely important mm. and uh, mm. uh, since 1957 mm. uh, we have unfortunately mm. lost shine of this uh, legal dimension mm. and recently mm. you know efforts are being made to uh, advance this uh, uh, legal case uh, predominantly the legal dimension of that dispute that mm. uh, some of the measures that she pointed out could be taken mm. to project mm. that uh, uh, cause at mm. the international level. Mm. Number one which uh, we oft uh, say mm. that is that uh, effort should be made mm. to uh, declare this mm. issue mm. as an international, uh, mm. in international issue of international humanitarian law, right. international armed conflict mm. uh, and uh, this issue could also be taken mm. uh, to the relevant bodies of human rights. Uh, so that uh, uh, the legal aspect and legal dimension mm. uh, could be highlighted. Right. This is very unfortunate that mm. uh, we have a, a very, you know, plausible log locus standi, mm. very plausible uh, case that we You're have. You're saying that the way that the case of Kashmiris has been pleaded, mm. uh, there needs to be perhaps a revisitation of the way that it's it's uh, been it, pleaded overall legally speaking. Uh, you know, uh, the issue that has mm. been uh, that we have been uh, pleading. Mm. It was a dominantly political, mm. journalistic, and diplomatic. Mm. The legal dimension was, uh, I, I'm not saying that it was missing, mm. but it was not substantiated the way it should have been done. Right, okay. You know? So mm. now I think it's uh, high time mm. to do that because if we can uh, do that and mm. if we are able to, uh, you know, uh, substantiate our case mm. with the strong legal underpinnings. Mm. I believe that uh, the world bodies, mm. international conscience, mm. international community mm. would likely to buy our argument. Right. So I okay. think this is very important that right. we can do. I can add another important thing that Gee. was earlier pointed Gee. out. That in the case of Palestine, mm. there were very strong voices. Mm. For example, Edward Said, mm. uh, he wrote uh, the politics of dispossession, yes. the question of Palestine. Mm. Uh, Mahmoud Darwesh also wrote. Mm. Uh, so, in as far as Kashmir is concerned, mm. we uh, lacked such voices. Okay. You know, uh, mm. people, indigenous people. Mm. There are uh, people that who advocate uh, and expose that cause. But I mm. think that such think that such scholars. Uh, we want people, intelligentsia, so to speak, all over the world, perhaps to 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 become a voice for the Kashmir. Yes, yeah, such scholarly voice, I mm. think, uh, okay. uh, should be uh, should be emerged. Should mm. come to forefront, mm. they can advocate that uh, uh, issue, they can present that issue, mm. issue uh, internationally. I think that is also, also the also need something. of the art that right. we okay. can let do. Me, let me come back to you. I'm going to go to Mary. G. Mary, uh, overall, uh, one of the things that Dr. Wes is talking about, he's saying that, you know, the way that we've seen, you know, authors all over the world, uh, perhaps, you know, talk about the cause of Palestine, to write about it, uh, hasn't happened as much uh, for the Kashmiris. Would you agree with that? Do you think that perhaps we, uh, you know, the kind of international um, uh, scholarly voices, or, or, you know, the word he used was scholarly intelligentsia, so to speak. Perhaps we need that kind of diplomacy now uh, for the world to react uh, to the Kashmiri cause. Well, you know, there, th there's a little bit of deception here because um, there, the Palestinian cause is more widely understood. Um, in 2014, when Israel was carpet bombing Gaza, um, there were over a million people around the world protesting for Palestinians. Um, but if you notice, uh, Palestinians are, are really approaching the final solution, um, you know, the final stages of genocide with um, Gaza being almost uninhabitable and the West Bank being expropriated. Um, and so that there's very little left for Palestinians. Um, and yet the scale of activism 
required to respond to that level of genocide um, is not happening despite widespread support. There was, uh, there was in 2019 at the lockdown of Kashmir, there were hundreds of thousands of protesters all over the world from Tokyo, New Zealand, the United States, Europe, um, there were hundreds of thousands of protesters, mostly uh, organized by Muslim and Kashmiri groups. And, and there were also for the Rohingya uh, in 2017, primarily Muslim protesters, but also others. And so there is a widespread support. What doesn't exist is the political organization to mobilize that consistently, um, not only for the Kashmiris, but for Palestinians. Mm -hmm. Kashmiris and Palestinians and Rohingya are in extremely acute uh, uh, condition, political condition. A and the response is nowhere near what is required to address that. A and I might say that the rhetoric used against mm -hmm. all three of them and also against the Uyghur in China, uh, the rhetoric is the war on terror rhetoric, mm. that it's the fight against terrorism. Mm. And, and that can help to undermine uh, support, confuse people and undermine broader support. So we, we need okay, to- Mary, let me come back to you. On that note, I want to go to uh, Ambassador Jamil with this. Gee, uh, Ambassador Jamil, I think Mary raises a very uh, pertinent point. She's talking about the fact that, you know, political organization to actually voice, uh, you know, uh, give voice to that kind of, uh, you know, the voices that are raised for the Kashmiri cause is certainly needed. Uh, to, to, you know, perhaps, you know, instead of it being fragmented or uh, haphazard, there needs to be that kind of organization that then that can have that kind of impact all over the world, also for the United Nations. Do you think that perhaps uh, there is need for, for that uh, at this time? No, no, I think um, in some shape or the other, mm. it's already happening. Mm. But okay. uh, you see, there are only three streams of uh, solution mm. and there are only three courses available to any any. Okay, I I I can't hear uh, I can't hear you. I think there's a problem with audio. G, um, Doctor West, uh, overall political organization is what Mary was talking about. Do you think? Do you agree? You think that perhaps it's it's fragmented. Perhaps there is need for more, uh, you know, kind of more organized uh, organized kind of framework. Of course, Kashmiri diaspora also governments all over the world which are sympathetic to the Kashmiri cause. Uh, you know, we need need that kind of uh, organization for it to become a, a bigger, huger movement all over the world. Exactly. That, uh, uh, that uh, close coordination, mm. uh, that is uh, required uh, mm. uh, as far as this uh, uh, better projection of Kashmir is, mm. uh, is, is concerned. Mm. You know, what uh, I, you know, very frequently uh, uh, say that and I coined that term which I call it A, B and C. Okay. A means army, B means bureaucracy mm. and C refers to uh, civilian regime. Mm. This is very unfortunate that uh, uh, there was uh, some less coordination between three centers of power okay. in this country. Mm. So we need to come closer all these uh, you know power centers they they mm. must come closer mm. to have a unified well knit policy on kashmir but in this terms is number of 1 in and terms of th diplomacy th th all over the world mm -hmm. um, you know like like uh, you were also saying and mary was also talking about the fact as far as writings are concerned publications all over the world are concerned you know uh, intelligentsia authors uh, world renowned authors are concerned the way that the palestinian cause has been taken up at that level for, for that kind of diplomacy, you know, uh, there has to be a consistent effort, not only from Pakistan, we've seen that, but also from Kashmiri diaspora all over the world, the sympath those sympathetic to the Kashmiri cause, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, uh, if, if, we, if we draw parallels, mm. uh, you know, from Palestine, mm. uh, as I quoted Edward Said, Edward mm -hmm. Said was Christian, mm -hmm. but he always talks about the you know Palestinian mm -hmm. Muslims as well. Mm -hmm. Overall, the issue of Palestine mm -hmm. also. 
but there is a dimension but dimension of pundits in mm. kashmir so we need to take their sport as well okay. they have okay. written literature mm. but the, that literature by and large goes against the muslims i mm. think we should try to explore some saner voices within pundits mm. they can talk about you know the uh, issue of kashmir or mm. uh, to, to the resolution of that uh, that issue kashmir uh, this is number one second thing is that we always talk about the human dimension of that dispute okay. so human dimension can only be highlighted can mm. only be advanced when we uh, uh, you know we we focus on mm. that dimension mm. for example producing literature okay this is very important mm. uh, recently since 2019 mm. kashmiri people they have started writing indigenous kashmiri mm. people they have started writing in english mirza waid wrote the collaborator Hmm. The Book of Gold Leaves, hmm. uh, Half Widows, hmm. Shahnaz Bashir. Hmm. Uh, earlier, uh, Basharat Peer has written Curfew Died. And hmm. if you go back, you will find uh, poetry of uh, Aga Shahid Ali, The Country Without a Post Office hmm. and many more poems. Hmm. So uh, this is the dimension that we need to work on hmm. so that that literature uh, must be produced. Hmm. And in that literature, that human angle must be highlighted. Hmm. So I think that if we are able to produce a plethora of literature, highlighting the human dimension of that uh, dispute i think there will be more buyers there will be more takers of mm. the world community this and is how do you think we do th we do that I mean, people are doing that people, people are doing there but mm. uh, diaspora people living in ajk mm. uh, they must also uh, uh, write such uh, stories Mm. They must also to uh, highlight to, uh, to, of to, to the human part, angle of what's happening. Human, human angle. This is this is right. uh, the important dimension. Mm. Second thing is that uh, the uh, psychological uh, trauma, mm. distress, mm. post-traumatic disorders. Mm. These are the diseases, psychological diseases people of Kashmir they are facing. Mm. I think that should also, also be, highlighted, be highlighted that this is not only a physical that people mm. are being killed and injured course, and mental, disappeared. The mental torment and of course it's a generational trauma for them. I will come back to you. I'm going to go to Ambassador Jamil Ji. Um, Ambassador Sab, I hope that you can hear us now. Uh, I think you were interrupted. With, uh, there was a problem with audio. Please go on. I can hear you well. Let me develop on that point. We Thank can you. produce tons of literature and that would be very useful. In mm. fact, whatever has already been said and whatever uh, whatever um, has already been deliberated all around the world, more mm. importantly, whatever we have resonated from Pakistan and our uh, friends of Pakistan, I think those uh, uh, constitute the public diplomacy stream. Uh, what I was mentioning was there are only three mechanisms to resolve any conflict, mm. international nature um, mm. of the world. And one is the public diplomacy sufficient. In fact, there is enough material has been already produced on it. The second is traditional diplomacy. And traditional diplomacy is the one through which you uh, try and convince the host countries where your embassies are there. So that is another part. The, but the most significant part, which we've been discussing, is the legal diplomacy, in which I was last in the last segment I was mentioning that International Criminal Court a statute article 8 it clearly attracts whatever is happening in kashmir if you we only pick one commission report there are two commission uh, report, report of the human right commission and the last report which was presented by no one less than the human right commissioner with his tears rolling down in fact that contains everything and anything what we are discussing and what we have been discussing here so that is a complete charge sheet not only that, the um, uh, the Secretary General's report recently published, that mm. was so candid that there were 4,000 injuries of the pallet guns and there are 1.3 million pallets fired in Kashmir within a mm. period, limited period of time, which is the maximum around the world. So mm. these two points are the one which could really constitute a mm. very good legal work. To, to, to really drag India to accept whatever has already been decided by the, uh, by, by the Security Council and the General Assembly. I would also like to underscore General Assembly Resolution Number 2649, which gives the right to the freedom fighter to, uh, uh, and, and to fight and to resist. And plus, the world has the obligation to assist them in whatever manner they can. So the world has the obligation at the same time how that can be triggered.
basically human uh, the, the un charter is very clear if any member state doesn't uh, follow the international law doesn't comply with the international law then there's chapter 6 and chapter 7 of the united nations security council and unless those chapter 6 and chapter 7 in particular is involved i think mm. india the, the the stage which has which it has uh, attained it would mm. become very hard for the world community to really make uh, india understand because india is going scot free with whatever they are doing and whatever violation of the world they are making mm-hmm. so they uh, they think that because of the political international political scenario international mm-hmm. geopolitical scenario they have gained some importance and their allies india's allies are quite important one including united states mm-hmm. so they are really turning their face on the other side so basically if that is not done then it's just matter of another security council resolution indicating that resolution number 47 should be implemented otherwise we are invoking chapter 7 of the security council charter period and that would be the solution now how to attain that the best way to attain it that the, the way mr west was also saying and ms mary that uh, enough material has been created there is a bottoms of pressure around the world by the human mm. right propen, uh, proponents and mm. uh, they, therefore those respective governments once they go to the security council or the general assembly they mm. have that in their mind that their own population are quite sensitized about human right violation in kashmir and in india overall if we only take the example of citizens act that by mm. itself act the 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 international community how the discrimination is taking place and that is also against the international law we talk about that ji mary uh, you know would you agree with that do you think it's it's simplistic perhaps to imagine uh, that you know the geo strategic interests of all other countries of course you know as far as america is concerned their relationship with india um, you know at this time um, consistently also the fact that you know of course economic interests do dictate um internationally how nations proceed as far as issues uh, of even you know humanitarian causes are concerned unfortunately that's also a reality uh, but do do what do you expect now at this stage for the kashmiri cause um you know now uh, where it is at this stage what what do you think realistically can we expect as far as the world is concerned Um well I completely agree with what mm. the, uh, the ambassador said about mm. the, you know, the growing importance of India to the United States and to mm. Europe and to Israel um mm. and they have a new cartel uh with uh, the United States Israel and mm. Dubai Russia also has a long economic and military relationship with India it's right. become extremely important mm. strategically mm. and so mm-hmm. this is very this bodes very uh, badly for the kashmiri struggle and for the palestinian struggle and, and also for the rohingya struggle because india and russia have involvement with uh, and china have involvement with the uh, myanmar uh, junta so th- this is a very bad uh, bodes very badly um but i think that there is growing public sentiment in favor of the Kashmiri struggle because of the groundwork that was laid um by Kashmiris who when they were uh, available on social media when they were allowed and by Kashmiris in diaspora who worked quite tirelessly in several countries um to create public understanding so we have a tremendous amount of work to do to counter this new political importance military and economic importance of india uh, to the united states and to israel and to europe we have a a bumpy road ahead um and i think it's going to be tied into their um a uh, facilitating war on terror propaganda against kashmir hmm. and um i think what he said is extremely important but i think that that the kashmiris laid the groundwork the journalists the, the, the citizen journalists and that there's growing um movement for for and also the need to align with palestinians hmm. with the rohingya people 
to, uh, to join forces in an anti-colonial broad, anti-colonial coalition, um, because standing alone has not been sufficient. Um, and, and joining forces will considerably strengthen all of those struggles against the Myanmar junta, against uh, the Modi regime, and against the uh, Israeli apartheid. Right. They're all anti-colonial struggles. Right. Mary, let me come back. Uh, gee, Dr. Aves, um, would you agree with that? You, you know, you, what Ambassador Sab is saying, what Mary is saying, essentially, of course, you know, as far as the movement itself is concerned, as far as picking up of that movement is concerned uh, for the Kashmiri cause. Exactly. You know, uh, Ambassador Sab has uh, mm. uh, discussed the, uh, you know, legal mm. part of that uh, mm. dispute uh, mm. that, you know, threadbare. Right. And uh, Mary also pointed out uh, some other parallel issues, issue Gee. of Rohingya, issue of Palestine also. And she also, uh, you know, pointed out the role played by Kashmiri diaspora mm. in the world. Uh, as far as the role of diaspora is concerned, I think that uh, earlier we established three centers. Uh, mm. Pakistan established three centers, mm. Kashmir centers. One was in Brussels, the mm. other was in Washington, and the, the third one was in London. I think uh, they, these centers uh, should play a very uh, decisive, important, significant, mm. meaningful role to highlight uh, the, the issue Kashmiri of course, uh, Kashmiri yeah. cause. Uh, so far, uh, these uh, centers, uh, I think that, uh, I don't know exactly that whether they now currently exist or not, but previously I think that their role, they should be revived and their role should be more robust mm. and more meaningful. This uh, should be done. The other thing that uh, we need to do is mm. that uh, what India is doing is basically that India tries to bring about the demographic chain in that valley. Right. And that uh, uh, it started uh, not only you know after uh, uh, 5th of August 2019, it started in 2019 mm. when it uh, you know did in Jammu. Mm. Uh, you know, 300,000 people, they have been massacred and a lot of people, mm. thousands of people have been uh, displaced from that. Mm. And 60% Muslim majority region reduced to a, uh, a Hindu majority region, unfortunately. Mm. Mm. And they are now trying to redraw the uh, constituencies. Mm. You know, in Jammu of now, course, there are yes. 15 Muslim mm. majority mm. Uh, co constituencies mm. and they are trying to do that. Mm. Similarly, they also try to increase the mm. number of seats of mm. Jammu just to have Hindu chief minister mm. and to create a you know, balance which mm. tilts towards uh, Hindu, mm. uh, Hindu chief minister and Hindu majority that mm. they want to create in that state. And these are the changes which India is doing, mm. which are not only illegitimate, which are illegal according to all uh, United Nations resolutions and other legal norms and practices. Right. I think that must be highlighted, that right. India should not, you know, this, this thing mm. should not be changed mm. by India. That must be projected to the world. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Dr. Awais bin Basi, thank you for joining us. Thank Dr. Jamil Khan, thank you for being with us today. Uh, Mary Scully, thank you for joining us uh, today. Um, Mashal Malik, thank you for being with us. As far as, of course, the Kashmiri cause is concerned, we've seen uh, Pakistani government, of course, consistently make efforts to highlight the issue. But uh, as far as consistency is concerned, we also need overall the role of intelligentsia. We talked about the legal uh, uh, ramifications of the changes that uh, Modi is making, as the India, India is making, as far as uh, the demographic is concerned, and uh, how that can be agitated in the United Nations. Um, we hope that all of those consistent efforts will make a dent as far as uh, the international community is concerned, as far as, uh, you know, uh, different uh, writings and different publications is concerned. Uh, all of these, those things will make a difference in, at the UN level and also at uh, the international level for the world as a whole to react and rise above uh, even, uh, you know, their own uh, geostrategic uh, interests. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, thank you for being with us.
beautiful valley of Kashmir. What have you observed over the years? Your streets witnessed bloodbaths. The childhood from the kids was being snatched as they became orphans. Stop here! 